Welcome back to the Skid Factory Quick Tech. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own power steering hose. I've been working on this project for about a week now. It's a 1975 HJ Kingswood um, fitting an LS1 uh, engine to it. A very common swap here uh, as in many parts of the world. Good engine, cheap repower, does the job, doesn't leak oil everywhere. So this car originally had power steering. Uh, it had a, a Holden V8 in it. Um, that was the hose that was on it. It's obviously the pump was mounted uh, right next to the box, so it has a very short hose. Uh, the LS1 pump is not mounted close to the box. It's on the other side of the engine. So uh, for this reason, we have to make a new hose to go between the two. So it's the high pressure hose, not the low pressure. So we're, we're talking uh, 800, 1200 psi under, under use, 100 psi idling. So obviously it has to have a specific type of hose, not just something with a couple of hose clamps on it. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can go about this. Um, one of them is to get a hose, a hydraulic hose man, uh, manufacturer or a, a truck to come in and make it for you. Um, this does work. They do the job, they know what they're doing. The biggest problem with these is um, the quality of it and the appearance of it will vary from person to person, how they go about it. Generally speaking, their job is to go out and keep a dozer going or an excavator. There's no need for them to make things look pretty. Uh, in our application, most of the time when people are doing jobs like this, they want their engine bay to look nice after they're finished. So um, when you end up with a hose that looks like it's meant to be bolted onto an excavator or a tractor or something like that, it doesn't look nice. Um, so the other way we can go about it is actually a DIY way to do it. And it's, um, it's actually using a technique that, that is uh, a normal practice for a hose manufacturer or a, like a repair truck or whatever. Um, but uh, they've made it so it is a much more, much nicer looking Thing, even though it, does, it uses the same technique, but it's a, it, they're nice to look at fittings. They're aluminium anodized. Um, these particular ones are Speedflow, which is Australian. Um, so it uses this hose, which is called 490 series. It is a power steering specific hose. Uh, it's basically a hydraulic a type of hydraulic hose, but it's got a, a nice sort of sheath over the top of it that keeps it looking good. Um, and also stops it from rubbing holes in things. It's, it's kind of like a, um, a fabric braid. So let's have a look how to do it. So the base hose that's used on this is a dash six size. That's a fairly standard size for an automotive power steering uh, hose. Um, that's the only one they offer. And it's pretty much right for anything that, that we'll ever work on. Um, these fittings come in 90, 45 and straight. Uh, there's no over center ones. They're kind of a little bit different design to a normal dash six, um, say a, a 100 or 200 series um, in construction. The first thing you got to do when you're trying to make this, make yourself a new hose is you have to get adapter fittings to go from whatever the thread is on your uh, steering box rack or pump or combination of the two and put the adapters in so you're changing it over to dash six. So there's a whole bunch of different ones available for it. You need to identify what thread you've got and what sort of seat it uses. So what the, the, the thread screws it in, but there's also a ceiling point, so a seat. Um, some of them are a taper, so it's a, it's a mechanical join. Some of them, are, in this case, this is for an LS1 power steering pump. It's called a bump tube. So that particular pump would have an O-ring to seal and this, this bump tube assembly uses that nut to push this little tube. That's a little tube that runs inside there with O-rings on the inside and an O-ring where it seals on the pump itself. You screw that in, tighten it up and that converts it over to an AN fitting. Um, as I said, there's a lot of ways you could do it. Um, you can use um, banjos on, in some situations, like a lot of Japanese cars would use a banjo fitting. Um, so you can get a banjo to AN converter. Uh, and in the, in the case of where you can't 
get an adapter, which is not very common, but it does happen. Um, the way out of it is, say I couldn't get an adapter for this hose that went into the box. You get the original hose and you cut it off and you weld on one of these. So it's just a weld on fitting. You would cut that hose off, that pipe off, measure it. I usually drill into there to give it a, a bit of a, a, a slide in effect so it supports it better. I actually tack them on with a TIG and then take them in and get um, Shane at Olcox to uh, silver solder them because I have that available to me, but you can just weld them on carefully. Uh, it's not something that you would probably do with a MIG welder unless you're really bloody good at it because it'll probably leak, but um, the basis of, of it is, is get that connected to that and that will convert it for you. So that's the, the emergency method. I've had to do that on some Japanese steering racks because they have this bump tube type setup on them, but a lot of the Nissan and Subaru ones, the, that thread isn't long enough. So you end up bottoming out before the bump, the, the um, O-ring fitting seats. So in that case, I would do it, I would use that method. So once you got these, screw them in. Now you convert it over to, to um, dash six AN, and then we can start on our hose manufacturer. Once you've got your um, adapters sorted, uh, we've got to go and screw them into the appropriate spots on the vehicle. That's LS1, uh, Australian version. It is a metric fitting. It's 16 by 1.5 with a bump tube. So that just screws into the outlet. You can feel the O-ring doing its thing. Doesn't need to be rattle gunned up. Just needs to be tight like most O-ring things. This one is for the steering box. So this is Imperial. Um, this is an old GM car. So it uses Imperial stuff on, on it mostly. Um, I think it's 11 16 18 with a tapered seat. So it was originally a flared, flared pipe with a, a tube nut. Now we're changing it over to just an adapter. All right, we got them fitted. So now is the time to work out what sort of um, angles you need for your hose. Um, I've obviously already done that with this vehicle. And in this case, it's appropriate to use two 90 degree bends. But as I said, there is 45 and straight as well. So first thing we do now is put one of these on one end of the hose. Then we can stick the hose, the fitting in, screw it on to either end work out our lengths and our path before we terminate the other end. In the Bedford series, we did a, an episode where we covered a lot of the, the um, assembly of um, AN fittings in, of different types, the uh, 100, 200 and 400 series. Uh, so this, is, this wasn't covered. It, this is a variant of 400 series. Uh, it is a bit different. It is assembled differently. We'll have a look at the fitting now. A very long thread there with a spike with a ceiling surface. This hose is ex extremely well reinforced. It's for uh, obviously high pressure stuff. Uh, you can see there's a metal uh, sort of braid there. This is very difficult to cut. Um, I've got no hope of cutting it with these things. You need ones about twice as the length of that to get the leverage. So I'm just using the, the cutoff wheel on the grinder to do it. That works fine as well. You just got to clean it up a little bit afterwards. Um, so how this assembles is this nut. You got to feed this into your soft jaws. And the nut has got a left hand thread in it. So it's actually, you're actually going to screw this hose into it. So feed it in, it's got a little lead in section, then you start pushing and turning it any clockwise. Takes a little bit of effort, not too bad. 
until it bottoms out at the end. So the procedure according to the speed flow manual is bottom it out, then undo it, half a turn. And that's to give it a, a little bit of expansion right at the end of the hose. So the hose is screwed backwards into that nut. Um, now you've got to grab a little mandrel and spread out the inner lining of it. There is a tool that you can buy, um, but I use this. It's the same sort of thing. It's just a sort of a polished spike. You just stick it in there and give it a little bit of love. And that's just to allow that to lead in easier. Uh, so an important part of this is because these are not steel fittings, they're aluminium, you need to use lubrication on them. It's very important, otherwise this will gall up and you'll wreck the fitting. Um, Speedflow recommend just a, like a heavy oil, like a gear oil. Uh, I just use this spray grease because it's easy to, to work with and it does the job. So you've got to sort of coat it a bit with the grease. Then this basically just screws in there. It's a long thread and it gets very tight after a while. It's getting quite tight now. You can hear the aluminium getting cranky at itself. That's why you need the lubrication. We're going to screw this in until it's almost home. So you want to leave about a millimetre or 40 thou if you're ancient or from America. And that's done. This, these are actually a very simple thing to, to assemble. Um, I, I really like them. Probably should use it for other things. So now that that's on there, then we can screw that on to uh, one end, whichever end you, you feel. Um, my preference is to put this onto the difficult end, the one that's least easy to get at, because when you've got to size up the other end, it just works better if it's in the open or not in a very awkward position. So um, I'm going to screw that onto the pump because the box is really easy to get at and we'll measure up. As it usually is with the modifying cars, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, you can see my, um, my fitting is actually very close to the spark plug, so we won't be able to put a spark plug boot on there. Um, so I'll probably replace this pump tube fitting with a, just a washer seal. You can wash seal on the back of that um, pump fitting there. It, it is a nice machine finish and that will pull that right in. So we'll, we'll pick up five mil and that will probably give us enough space. Routing the hose is going to change depending on the application, of course. Um, it is a hose, so you can go from engine to cross member and back to the, to the steering box or whatever. Um, that's fine, it's flexible. You just gotta leave a bit of movement. Um, this particular engine doesn't isn't gonna move at all anyway because it's got um, tough mounts on it. So there's very little engine movement or none. Um, the only thing we've got to battle with here is we've got a steering linkage moving back and forward all the time right where the, the hose goes, so we need to keep that in mind. So I've, I've just uh, P-clipped it to the sump um, temporarily to sort of get our position of it. Then we can do a measurement up there to figure out where to cut it and to uh, terminate the other end. As I said, you're supposed to use a shear type cutter to do this, but I don't have one, so I use that. 
We've just got to tidy it up a bit afterwards. Don't forget to clean it out as you're going through the process. Now we just repeat what we've already done. Power steering hose is something that probably gets forgotten most of the time until you get to that point on your conversion. Um, they can be quite expensive if you don't know where to look. Um, this hose here is 100 bucks. Do it yourself. It's not uh, not not a lot of um, dollars in it. Uh, sometimes, if you're doing like a brand specific conversion, where it's like a one JZ into a Crusader or something, you might be able to use some hose that's off some other model and it just fits. That's great. Um, that's not going to happen very often, uh, and it's usually old haggard stuff that's been around for 30 years already. So, um, have a nice fresh hose that is. Uh, not going to burst and set fire to your car is always a good thing. That's the hose done, ready to be refitted. As you refit it, you may need to rotate one end or the other just to get the orientation correct so you don't twist the hose. No big deal. We've left a, probably two rotations worth of gap there so we can just undo it or do it up a little bit just to get the orientation right. That's another quick tech topic covered for you. Um, this will save you money and keep you in control of your project. And that's what we're all about, getting it done, doing it yourself. Thanks for watching. If you've got any more suggestions of topics, let us know in the comments. See you next time. Why do you always use 1JZ in a Crusader as an example? Because that's what poor people build. Poor people? Well, they used to, not anymore. 1JZs used to be 500 bucks, now they're bloody 2,000 bucks. Yeah, but milk and bread used to be $2.50 from the shops, now that's going to cost you like 20 bucks. Inflation, bruh. Woodrigonomics. <laughs> Can you do my tax for me? Sure, bro.